Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most giving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is infinite, it's infinite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his slave more than the mother loves her child. Allah loves his slave more than the mother loves her child. After one of the after one of the battles, the Sahaba were standing there with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sahih Hadith. They were standing there with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the female captives of war, she had lost her son. So she was running around frantically. And then when she finally found her child, she ran to the child and she grabbed her, her baby and she put him onto her breast. And the Sahaba were able to see this expression of love and joy, right? So the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was standing there with them, he said to them, Do you think this mother would ever throw her child into the fire? <coughs> so they said, The Prophet of Allah, there's no way this woman would ever throw her child into the fire. He said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves his slave more than this woman loves her child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He hates to throw His slave into the hellfire. But it is unfortunate, my brothers, we are the ones that insist. We are the ones that neglect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones that bring injustice upon ourselves. We are the ones who choose to take the wrong path. We are the ones, who we, we are the ones that insist on doing that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He opens His doors. His mercy is always there. His ability to forgive is always there. But we are the ones that harm ourselves. That's why my brothers on the day of resurrection, when you and I will stand in front of Allah, no excuses will work on that day. Allah's rahmah. Allah's ability to forgive my brothers. In the Sahih Hadith, O oh my slave, O oh my slave, if you come... O oh my slave, if you come to me with sins that reach the heavens. My slave, if you come to me with sins that reach the heavens. But you don't associate partners with me and you ask me for my forgiveness. My slave, I will come to you with mercy that match your sins. But we are the ones that insist. He sent us a prophet to guide us. But we chose a path other than his path. He sent us a Qur'an to, to guide humanity, but we chose a path other than the path of the Qur'an. Today we try to mix dunya with deen. Today we're trying to mix dunya with deen. It doesn't work that way. There's only one path to Allah. There's only one way you can reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His path was the only path that Allah, Allah chose that path. And anything other than the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will lead you to your destruction. So my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is there. But we choose to harm ourselves and we choose to neglect ourselves and we choose. So my brothers, in short, you know, this topic is about the month of Ramadan. You know, my brothers, the greatest month of the year is only maybe about 19, 20 days away. A month that the Sahaba used to prepare six months in advance for. The month of Ramadan is the greatest month of the year. What is available for the believers in the month of Ramadan is not available in any other month. The month of Ramadan is my chance and your chance to redeem ourselves. The month of Ramadan is the month that you and I can finally get ahead. The month of Ramadan, my brothers, if you deal with the month of Ramadan correctly, 
if you give the month of Ramadan its haq and its rights, wallahi my brothers, you will go from zero to hero in the month of Ramadan. <coughs> The month of Ramadan is the month of the believers. It's the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you can reach Him. You see, my brothers, every single act of ibadah, every single act of worship, we know, we know its reward. Or at least we have an idea of its reward. Everything we've been told. That if you give charity, Allah will do this. If you pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this. If you look after your mother and your father, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate you. Every act of worship we've been told about, except for the act of fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fasting is for me and, our, and I shall reward him. I shall reward it accordingly. For the one that fasts, there are two celebrations. The celebration of when he breaks his fast, when he sits down with his family and he breaks his fast, that's the first celebration. The next, the Prophet of Allah says, the next celebration is when you stand in front of Allah and you see the reward of that day that you fasted. Such is the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is the greatest month of the year. The month of Ramadan is the month that every single one of us should be waiting for anxiously. Because the truth is, many of us will not make the month of Ramadan. You know, I've given the talks of Ramadan many times. Sometimes it's two weeks before, sometimes it's a couple of days before. I remember a few years back, back home in Sydney, we had a brother with his cousin, and a girl in the back, they had a car accident the night before Ramadan, and they all died. So the reality is, is you and I haven't been promised anything. The month of Ramadan, my brothers, is the greatest month, and wallahi, if Allah allows you to see the month of Ramadan, this is a big sign of Allah's love. But the question is, is how are we going to deal with the month of Ramadan? Is the month of Ramadan going to be like every other month for you and I? Are we going to deal with this great month like how everyone else deals with this great month? You see, my brothers, the reality is, is the month of Ramadan is the month of fasting. It's the month of Quran. It's the month of Salah. It's the month of Tahajjud. It's the month of Taraweeh. It's the month of charity. It's the month of piety. It's the month of i'tikaf, seclusion. The month of Ramadan is the month that every single one of us is supposed to say goodbye to the world and connect himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan is the month where every one of us is supposed to put his head down and work and work and work and work and work and he doesn't raise his head until the day of Eid. But unfortunately, today it's the exact opposite. Today the month of Ramadan has become a festive month. It's a month of celebration. It's a month of nightlife. It's a month of hanging out. It's a month of chilling out with the boys. It's the month of, hey, you invite me, inshallah, for iftar, and I'm going to invite you, inshallah, for iftar. It's the month of feasts. <coughs> It's the month, oh, you know, it's the month where all of our family gets together, mashallah. The month of fasting has become the month of food. <laughs> the month of tahajjud has become the month of hanging out. The month of the Quran has become the month of gossip. Did you see? Did you hear? Did you go? Did you come? Tell me what's happening, tell me what's on the ground. And Muslims, religious Muslims now. We want, we wait for the month of Ramadan. Brother, I love the month of Ramadan. MashaAllah, why do you love it? There's just this buzz in the air. And Allahu Akbar, and what do you do with this buzz? I do anything and everything except which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. You see, my brothers, one of the names of the day of resurrection is the day of regret. One of the names of the day of resurrection is the day of regret. Why? Because on that day when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you realize the opportunities that Allah gave, the chances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, the amount of time that we wasted, the amount of bounties and blessings that Allah gave me and I rejected, you will see the weight of all of this when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Today, now, when you and I think of last Ramadan, the Ramadan that, yeah, it came and I didn't do much. Now, today, when you and I talk about it, big deal, you know, better luck next time. Habibi, now you can have that conversation. But when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you realize the opportunity that Allah gave you and you realize how you wasted it. Allah says on that day, people will be biting on their fingers. That's the day. That's the day when the young child, his hair will go gray. That's the day when the pregnant woman will lose her load. That's the day when people will be walking around like they're intoxicated. Allah says, nay, they are not intoxicated. Rather, the severity of that day has driven people insane. Madness. Today, you and I, when you look at the Ramadan that passed, you think, yeah, what's the big deal, inshallah? I'm going to try better this year. Habibi, no. On that day, wallahi, you will cry tears of blood. That Allah gave you a bounty. That Allah gave you a gift. That Allah gave you the opportunity. He gave me the chance. And how did I deal with it? How did I deal with it? My brothers, wallahi, if you know the value of the month of Ramadan, your heart would be dancing, bro. Wallahi, the opportunities and the chances that you have, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the gates of hellfire are closed, the gates of paradise are open, and Allah, imagine the shayateen are chained. This is your chance, this is your moment, this is your opportunity. And where are we, brother? We're in shisha bars, we're playing cards with the boys, we're going for drives. You know, it's not very popular here, but come, come, Wallahi, come to Sydney. Religious brothers, they fish from Isha all the way to Fajr. And we sleep all day. Why? Because the month of Ramadan has become a month of burden now. It's become a month of burden. Hanging out with the boys, catching up with friends and family. It seems nice on the outside, trust me. It seems very nice. The month of Iftar, you invite me and I invite you. And who cares about Maghrib in the Masjid? And who cares about Isha in the Masjid? No, no, let's sit down and chit chat. We can do this all year round. You know, I can invite you all year round. All of a sudden now, all the invites of the world, they fall in the month of Ramadan. Do you think this happens by chance? Do you think shaitan hasn't planned this for centuries to destroy this ummah? You know, Wallahi, it's enough that we're all cracked all year round. Then the one month, the one month that Allah is basically giving you a free ticket. What do we do with it? What do we do? We wasted with them. Yeah, yeah, halal things. It's not haram. Inviting your friends over for dinner, that's halal. It's not haram. But the idea, the concept, brother, it's not the time. Personally, this is not a sunnah. Personally, for me, the month of Ramadan, forgive me, the hell with my wife, the hell with my kids, the hell with my friends. Habibi, this is my month. Please leave me alone. Don't invite me. Don't call me, don't text me, I'm not interested. Leave me alone. This is my chance, man. This is my chance, this is my opportunity. I tell my wife, no cooking in the month of Ramadan. Basic foods, bro. Basic foods. Any food that takes more than half an hour to prepare, I'm not interested in it. Today, in the month of Ramadan, our wives get together and they spend hours in the kitchen. Hours is what you are. You have no idea, my brothers. You know, let me tell you something. You know, lately I've been saying this to the brothers. You know what's killing this ummah? It's not haram. Haram is not killing ummah. We... You know, haram, we really know what's haram. Haram is haram, it's clear. There's always guilt when you do it. You know what's killing the ummah? Halal is killing this ummah. It's halal things that are wasting our time, wasting our efforts. Yeah, it's halal. No shaykh can tell you it's haram. But it's lahu, it's wasting your time. It's killing this ummah. Foods that take hours to prepare. It's halal, it's halal. Of course you can eat it. Nothing wrong with it. But the idea... My wife wasted hours in the kitchen cooking me food. Hours. We have a particular dish back home in Sydney. I am convinced it's haram to eat. I'm convinced it's haram to make. 
it takes six women. They sit down and they prepare this, you know, it's like vine leaves and they put this hours preparing it and rolling it and six women sit down and they backbite and they gossip and they mock and they laugh and they joke. It takes six hours to prepare. Then it takes 48 hours to cook. 48 hours to cook. It takes you five minutes to eat it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's halal. Of course, not haram. It's like poison. Even a small dosage. It's going to kill you. It's poison. We know. He says halal. Halal is like medicine. The right dosage will kill you. But too much of it will also kill you. We're drowning in halal things that are distracting us, taking us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lahu, lahu, waste of time, bro, waste of time. Waste of time. The month of Ramadan is the month where the Habibi are not interested. The month of Quran, the month of dhikr, the month of bro, the month, your heart, your heart, your soul's been trapped. Your soul has been drowning in dunya and wasting time. Your soul has been drowning for 11 months. Then this one month, this one opportunity, bro, your chance to reach levels, your chance to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, what? Shayateen are changed. I mean, what else do you want? Shayateen are changed. You, you, you know, chained up. You know, for the Sahaba, knowing that the Shayateen were chained were a massive thing. But today, you and I, I mean, what? my nafs, my nafs and my desires are far more severe than Shaytan. That's why in the month of Ramadan, shaitan is chained, but there's no change in our community. Why? Habibi, because what I carry inside me, even shaitan is impressed. We've built nufus, egos, luxuries in life. Even shaitan, he can't compete with you sometimes. The month of Ramadan, my brothers, forgive me, man, forgive me, Allah. The month of Ramadan is not a festive month. It's not a month for dancing and singing and making sweets. We have sweet stores in Sydney. We have sweet shops that are traditional. <clears throat> they have sweets that are only made in the month of Ramadan. You know what I ask really? What are you celebrating about, bro? I just want to know, yani, in the month of Ramadan, in the month of Quran and Tahajjud, what are you celebrating about? It's, 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 it's supposed to be the month of fasting. Yani, you eat little and you do more. You're supposed to actually starve. The Prophet of Allah used to break his fast on simple foods. But look at our lives. You wait all day for the what? For the iftar. Your wife and your family have been in the kitchen for five, six hours, and God forbid the food isn't right. God forbid the flavor isn't right. God forbid the, you know, it has to be the right temperature. Then we sit down like monsters. Wallahi, like monsters. Sometimes there's four, five, six different dishes. Six different dishes on the, you know, on the sufra. And we see here, <laughs> people of Syria. Ah, Wallahi, please, bro, stop lying. You and I couldn't give a rat's ass about the people of Syria. We talk, but your life proves that you and I couldn't care less. People are dying, people are starving. Habibi, who cares? Me, it's about me and my nafs and my luxury and my satisfaction. You sit down on a sufra that can feed 15, 20 people there. You say, is that all you made for food today? Anyway, anyway, forget that. So you sit down on a sufra, right? You eat enough food, you can't move. You can't move. You come to the salah, you can barely breathe. Brother, can you tell me where do they pray eight rakat? Why, 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 brother? Why aren't you doing twenty? Uh, and then Allahu Akbar, all the ulama and the fuqaha of the ummah now, brother. It's not sunnah. It's not. Habibi, forget sunnah for concepts. If I am, yeah, imagine I'm looking for concessions in the month of Ramadan. Why? Because the reality is, really, you and I don't care about salah. Plus, I'm physically no we need fit to stand there and pray twenty rakat, bro. Everyone's looking for the turbo imam. You guys have this issue here. The boys, we text each other. Who's the quickest imam? Wait, in and out, bro. I want to sit there in the masjid, bro. Serious, man. In and out, brother. You know, sometimes, Wallahi, I ask myself, 
ask myself, imagine those Sahaba who gave their lives for this Ummah, gave their lives for Allah. Imagine they were able to see this generation now and see what they gave their lives for. Imagine how bitter that feeling would be. Imagine how bitter that, like, imagine, like, just, just, you know, just hypothetically speaking, imagine what, like, you grabbed Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu and say, uh, Hamza, look, just, just, just come here for a brother, you know, just come for, <laughs> come here for a moment, my brother. I just want to show you the ummah that you gave your life for, huh? Look at its condition. Look at the way they carry on in the month of Ramadan. Imagine how disappointed you would be, man. Imagine how this really like imagine how disturbed you would be. And you know what Allah, my brothers, what I'm sharing with you, it's not like, you know, sometimes I tell brothers, you know, brother, go hard, don't waste your time, get off your phone, you know, it's about Quran. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, I know, brother, but I get motivated for a couple of days, but for 30 days, I maybe mean, 30 days, well, like 30 days they fly, bro, they fly. They fly. But we, because we have no program, we have no schedule, we, you know, we have no god fearing people around us that we can hang out, get some advice from them. What should I do? How should I spend my day? You don't have any plan, any, you know, within the first 10 days, what do I want to achieve in the next, you know, 50? Habibi, it's just whatever, bro. Kullu meshi, kaz, kullu meshi. That's why the month of Ramadan comes, the first, you know, the first few days, people are praying outside, and then it's what? Gone. No one to be seen. It's like Allah doesn't exist anymore. You know, it's like that the Quran all of a sudden has vanished off the shelves, right? Everyone is gone. Where are we now? Now we're in Shisha bars, we're hanging out, we're going for job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halal, 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 brother. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. I'm not, I'm not saying it's haram. I don't want anyone leaving saying, hey, Abu said this is haram. No, no, no. Enjoy, enjoy, inshallah. Have fun, have fun with it, bro. Right? Oh, the whole month, the whole month. The month where the doors of Jannah are open, the, you know, the, the gates of hellfire are closed, Allah's mercy is there every single night. Did you know this? Every single night in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks down upon this ummah and he handpicks, he handpicks a group of people and says, you, hellfire has been made haram on you permanently. And where are you and I? Every night in the month of Ramadan, my chance and my opportunity, imagine Allah handpicks. Allah handpicks every night in the month of Ramadan. He chooses those people whom He says, You, hellfire has been made haram permanently. Where are you and I? Where? <laughs> We're having fun, man. I'm going to this restaurant and that restaurant and this bar and that bar and this cafe and that cafe. Like the month of Ramadan is this big. You know, it's like this big party. You come now, you come to, to the Muslim streets in the month of Ramadan. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it looks very nice on the outside. It looks like, oh yeah, look, everyone is... You have no idea how much. You know, you see, Shaitan has worked so hard. In the month of Ramadan, he actually needs the vacation anyway. Shaitan can be chained up in the month of Ramadan and trust me, Habibi, he's like this. He's kicking back, having a cup of coffee. He's looking at us and he's laughing. You know why? You know, it's like a fan. You know, sometimes you spin a fan, you spin a fan so much that you can let it go and it's going to spin for a long time after you. Habibi, Shaitan has been spinning you and I so much for, you know, for the last 11 months. Shaitan's been playing with you and I. Trust me, he can leave you, forget Ramadan, he can leave you for another six months and he wouldn't even have to lose a moment of sleep over it. Why? We're in cruise control, Habibi. But when it comes to dunya, we all understand. Sometimes I speak like this, brother, to me, but that's a bit harsh. What do you mean? I can't make phone calls. I, can't. No, I, I say, brother, forget me. If the local bank here, your local bank, if your local bank called you and said, you are Mr. Muhammad Khan, whatever your name is, uh, brother, uh, subhanAllah, we've chosen you from our database. Today the bank is feeling generous, you know. We've chosen you from our database. We want you to come into the bank today. We're going to take you downstairs to our vault. We're going to open up the vault and we're going to give you two hours, Mr. Khan. We're going to give you two hours, Mr. Khan. Come into the vault, two hours. Do as you please. Take what you want, when you want, as much as you want. Some of you are already smiling. Two hours. Two hours, Kazan, you need half an hour, man. Why? Because you understand money, bro. 
if the bank gave me two hours and they said I can take what I want, Habibi, I'm going to call every member of my family and tell them to come down with lorries and trucks and whatever you call them in this country, bro. I ask you by Allah, if you were in that bank vault for two hours, would you have time to answer your phone? Maybe I'm nuts. Help me out, honestly. Would you have time to answer the phone? So what are you being extreme for, man? It's just a phone call, bro. Answer the phone. If the bank gave you two hours, two hours, bro, far out. Two hours, plenty of time. It's, I mean, it's a vault. It's not a football field, it's a vault. Two hours. I'm telling you, if your mum called you, would you answer the phone? <coughs> that would you have time to jump online and see what's happening? Would you take a nap? Would you sit down to have a meal? But I don't understand. For money you give up all, but for Allah you won't do it. For money, you got no time for no one, no time for your kids. I mean, I'm sure here we all agree. In those two hours, I don't want to see my wife, my kids, nothing, right? We all agree. That for this we understand, in the month of Ramadan, forget the votes. Allah says the gates of paradise are open. And the gates of Jahannam are closed. Ask me whatever you want. Where's the woman? Where are we? <laughs> oh, that was a lovely iftar last night, brother. That was a lovely iftar. Is iftar halal or haram? Halal. Halal, halal. I don't want anyone leaving saying hubbles for saying in the masjid that you know iftar is a haram. No, 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 it's perfectly halal. But you know as well as I do, most of our iftars, most of our iftars, where are you praying your maghrib? When you're invited to someone's house and you're having your iftar, where are you praying your maghrib? Be honest with me, wait. Uh -huh. At home. You know, for the last few years I've been telling brothers, brother, you know, in the month of Ramadan you should be praying your maghrib in the masjid. They look at me like I'm smoking some sort of weed that's exclusive in Australia or something. Brother, you want me to pray maghrib in the masjid? <coughs> yes, my brother. In the month of Ramadan, you should be praying your Maghrib in the Masjid. In the month of Ramadan, when the whole world is sitting at the home and sitting in their restaurants and sitting, yes, yes. Brothers, please put your phones away, please. No one to be recording, please. Yeah, yeah. In the month of Ramadan, when everyone is at home with their families, with their friends, and, and the Masjid here, there's only two, three people standing here. That's where you should be, my brother. You want to taste the month of Ramadan? Try it. Actually, I dare you to try it. Put a policy for yourself this month. This, inshallah, this Ramadan. Put a policy to yourself that every single Maghrib, I will break my fast on three dates in the Masjid. I will pray my Masjid, you know, I will pray my Maghrib Namaz and then go home and see the difference, bro. Start teaching your wife and teach your children and teach this monster of a nuts. That Allah and His Prophet come first. But you get the feeling. You come to the masjid, there's no one here. Everyone's at home. In the houses of Allah, there are what? Dijan. Men. See, my brothers, when you're with Allah, you have to be artistic. To worship Allah when everyone else is worshipping you. Doesn't make you special, trust me. <laughs> why is the tahajjud so important? What, like really, why is it in the last third of the night, Allah is telling us that He descends down to the lowest heaven? Why? Why not descend down in peak hour when everyone else is awake? Have you ever asked yourself, or the, I don't know, like, do, you, do, you, do you guys ever have these conversations with yourselves? Why, why Allah, why? Why do you descend in the last third of the night? 
and very few are standing and praying. So when there's a few, Allah descends and says, is there anyone that's in need? Is there anyone that has any, you know, is there any khidmah, any requirements? While you and I are snoring, Allah has descended down to the lowest heaven every single night of your life. And where are you and I? We're snoring. So yeah, worshipping Allah when the masses are worshipping Allah, that, that's, trust me, that doesn't make you special. One of the companions, he embraced Islam after 20 years. After 20 years of the Risala, he embraced Islam. It was after one of the battles. And he stood there and he gave the bay'ah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he stood there and he's watching. Khalas now. And he said words, I really wish this ummah would understand. He said, when Islam was presented to me, there was only six Muslims. He was one of the ones who the Prophet gave him da'wah in the very beginning. He rejected. He said, when Islam was presented to me, there was only six Muslims. Now I've accepted Islam 20 years later, there's thousands of them. You're just another face in the crowd now, bro. It's those. They were the special ones. The 313 that attended the Battle of Badr, the 313 that attended the Battle of Badr, they're not like anyone else. In fact, so much so, Jibreel alayhi salam, he asks Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he says to my Prophet of Allah, the 313 that were with you in Badr, what do you say about them? What do you say about them? So the Prophet of Allah, he says to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he says, we deem those 313, we deem those men that were there in Badr, we deem them to be the best amongst us. Jibreel says, by Allah, the angels that were there for you in Badr, they're the best of the angels in the heavens. Prestige, brother, prestige. While the Ummah is at home waiting to break their fast with seven different dishes, and you're here in the masjid with only three, four other brothers breaking your fast on dates. Habibi, this is how you earn Allah's attention. The month of Ramadan, my brothers, is a very, very, very special month. It's a very blessed month. It's a month that you need. This is your opportunity to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your chance to redeem yourself. This is your chance to finally connect. This is your chance to block and walk away from everything and all that. This is your chance when the month of Ramadan should be all about you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those of you who are working, you should have put in your leave months ago. Why? Habib in the month of Ramadan. And again, it's a haram to work. But for me personally, I don't want to work. I don't want to travel. I don't. Not interested. This is my chance. Habib, 11 months of the year, I give it to my wife. I give it to my kids. I give it to my dunya. I give it to my business. I give it to the boys. I give it 11 months of the year. Even the month of Ramadan now as well. Like, leave me alone. The month of Ramadan, you should be like a majnoon, like a madman. Systematic clockwork. You know why, my brothers? The Prophet of Allah in the Sahih Hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stood in front of the Sahaba and he said, May he be destroyed. May he be humiliated. May he be destroyed. May his nose be rubbed in the dirt in humiliation. You know, my brothers, for the Sahaba to hear the Prophet of Allah make dua against someone, this was, this was very, very strange. This was very rare. The Prophet of Allah, sallallahu he never cursed anyone, never made dua against them. Very rare in the seerah. So for the Sahaba to see in the masjid and hear the Prophet of Allah standing on the mumbar saying, may he be destroyed, may he be humiliated. The Sahaba were petrified. They're thinking, who is this wicked person? So they said, our oh, Prophet of Allah, who is this wicked man that you're cursing? <laughs> he said, may he be humiliated. The man that lives to see Ramadan. And he lives out the days of Ramadan. 
and he finishes the month of Ramadan and Allah doesn't forgive him, may he be destroyed. People ask me, brother, how come, how come nothing's going right in my life? I don't know, do you think it's a possibility that you and I have been carrying the curse of Rasulullah from the last 15 Ramadans that we've done? Do you think maybe that's a possibility, bro? My brothers, the month of Ramadan is your month to shine. This is your chance, bro. Take it, man. Take it. Make the most of this month, bro. This is the month of fasting. It's the month of mujahada, struggling, you know, pushing yourself to the absolute limit, bro. Why do you think we have the day of Eid? Why? Because you work, you work, you work, you work, you work, you work until the day, until that month is over, until that month is complete. Then, then, after we've khalas, I'm absolutely exhausted. I can't, I can't do another day. Then, we come to the masjid and we celebrate. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have some food and we have some sweets. And we celebrate. Why? You celebrate because you've worked so hard. Because you've deprived yourself of so much. Because you pushed yourself to the limit. Sometimes I ask myself, these guys who hang out every single night in the Ramadan, what are you celebrating? Honestly, what are you celebrating? What is it that you're celebrating on the day of Eid? You've been going out every night. You've been having sweets and feasts every single night. You've been wearing the finest clothes every single. What are you celebrating on the day of Eid? Well, it, actually, it, it genuinely actually boggles my mind. What are you doing on the day of Eid? No, it's the opposite. You work, 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 struggle, struggle, struggle. You push yourself, you push yourself, you push yourself. And to what? To that last night, bro. And then in that morning, we know that the month is done, it's finished, and I gave it my absolute best. Then, then we celebrate and we ask for not to accept. Not one like the whole month, I'm in cruise control, and when I want, I do, and when I want, I come, and we've wasted time and time and time, and then on the la 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 <clears throat> so how it works. The month of Ramadan is a very, very, very special month, my brothers. And it's an opportunity that Allah gives. And when Allah gives an opportunity and He sees you wasted, that doesn't make Allah happy. So please, my brothers, Wallahi, we've wasted enough time, bro. We've wasted enough. Don't waste this Ramadan. Don't make this Ramadan like every other Ramadan. Please. Please. And for those of you who can, for those of you who can, Wallahi, I beg you, I urge you, bro, Wallah, I'll kiss your hand. If you can do the last 10 days of i'tikaf in the masjid, please do it. It's an absolute life changer. If you can do the last 10 days of i'tikaf, no phone, no wife, no kids, just last 10, the holiest nights of the year. The holiest nights of the, the the last ten nights of Ramadan, the holiest nights. Nights you have no idea. You have one well, Wallahi, no words, no Shaykh, no Ali can give justice to the last ten nights of Ramadan. Even the Prophet of Allah, he used to tie his, his he used to tie his belt, he used to pull on his belt. His wives, his companions knew. No sexual intercourse, no, no habibi, nothing. These are the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He used to push himself even more. This is it. This is my last stretch. This is my last chance. Last 10 nights. Whack, whack every single night. Staying up the whole night. No time to sleep in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. No time to waste. No time to gossip. No time. I don't have time for anything. Last 10 nights. This is my chance. In these nights, there is a night. There is a night in the Quran, Allah says, one night in the last ten nights, greater than a thousand months. Khairun min Imagine one thousand months of worship of Allah. This one night is better than a thousand months. Where are we? We're in Shishabaz, man. <laughs> You know, even in Muslim countries, 
they make TV shows that are only released in Ramadan. Do you, like, do you, do you guys have this also in Pakistan or not? Yeah? Am I alone? Yes. I think they're too scared to respond. Yes, Othman? We have a very famous Syrian show called Bab al Hara. Phenomena in the Muslim world. Phenomena. It's an absolute. Wallahi, people wait 11 months for the new series. 11 months to watch. When are they watching? Look at, look at the. Habibi, he's been spinning the fan, spinning the fan. <laughs> In the last 10 nights, there is one night. And please don't come and tell me, brother, which night is it? And some of the Mashaykh said it's on the 27th. And some of Habibi, there is no authentic 100% Dalil to tell you. Yes, there are indications. Yes, there's inclinations. Yes, there is this. Yes, there is that. But this idea of Allah, it's on the 27th night, nothing. There is nothing to tell you this is the night. There's only one way you can tell. Is if you work at night, we know that it's in one of the odd nights. We know that it's an odd night. One of the nights, you work hard, you wake up in the morning, there are some signs, but no indication. So what do we do? We say, brother, one night that's worth more than a thousand, no chances. You take off the whole ten nights, and you work for the ten nights. The masjid is empty on the 27th night, people are praying outside. Like as if Allah only exists on the night. Last 10 nights, the holiest nights of the year. Your chance, your opportunity. It's the month of the Quran. So my brothers, well, there's so many things that I want to mention. And just, my mind is everywhere and I don't want to take too much of your time. But I'm sure you get the message. Don't waste this month. Go hard, bro. Go hard. I'm telling you, go hard. Ludicrous hard. Eat it, bro. Smash this month. Why? Because if you don't, and you don't earn Allah's mercy in this month, then the Prophet of Allah's dua is against you. I hope my message is clear here today. I hope there's no misunderstandings in any way, shape, or form.